What's up? This is Autark here from uh, SmartBikeTrans.com. I want to talk about the Peloton Power Accuracy. The Peloton bike measures your power output and display that number for you on the screen. You will notice this number is constantly changing and that's because that's how power meters work. It measures the torque applied and calculates your power in watts and you see that number displayed for you on the screen. Unlike power meters that use strain gauges to measure power, the Peloton Bike Plus is powered by a digitally controlled resistance brake system that auto calibrates and has a load cell sensor that measures output separately. Peloton offers a number of power zone specific classes and you will notice in these classes the instructor will refer to working or call out working at a specific zone. And these zones are established by your FTP or functional threshold power. And if you do not know your FTP, you can perform a test to establish that number. Uh, Peloton offer a number of FTP tests with different instructors, so you can do one of these classes to establish your FTP. And uh, once your FTP is known, you can enter your FTP number or that 20 minute average that you get in your profile using your Peloton bike, and the Peloton will calculate your FTP for you and establish your zones. And once enabled, you'll see this zone bar at the bottom of your Peloton screen. Training with a power meter is the absolute best way to get the most out of your training and measure progress. Unlike heart rate or resistance based training, power allows you to measure the muscular demands of the effort instead of just the aerobic. There is so much you can do with this number to decipher, track, analyze your training and quantify the effort you are putting into your training sessions. And for this number to have any value, it needs to be accurate and consistent. If not accurate, then at least consistent. Uh, consistency is important as it allows data from one day or one effort to be compared to another. So if it is 20% off, then as long as it is always 20% off and you're using the same bike, then you can at least take that number and compare it to another ride from another day. Uh, you do not want to just have a random number generator on your bike. Okay, so I have been testing the Peloton Bike Plus for quite a while now using my pedal-based power meter, the Osioma Dual. Uh, power meter. The Peloton bike has a 170 millimeter crank length. This is important to know because the power meter needs to be configured with the crank length. In my case with the Alciama pedals, I can just plug in this number in their specific app and set it to 170 millimeter, calibrate it and uh, let it settle fit in for a, a ride or two and it should be good to go. So let's take a look at different classes I did and compare the numbers from the Peloton Bike Plus to my Osioma pedal power meter. One thing to keep in mind here, my Osioma pedals have been put to test against the Tax Neo bike, Wahoo Kicker bike, and two other smart trainers very recently that measure power and also against other two power mirrors that I have installed on two different bikes and uh, they're always within one to three percent which is expected. Uh, so I know they are working and they are precise. Okay so here's a Peloton ride. This is one of the earlier rides I did back in October. Uh, I added some smoothing to the data here. Uh, the Peloton does smooth out the power data a little bit on its own. Uh, at the beginning of the ride at very low power output, I'm talking about less than 100 watts. Uh, the power number looked really good. As I started increasing power, the number started to separate a tiny bit, nothing major. However, when I hit that 14 minute mark, you can see how the number started to separate a lot more. The Bike Plus was measuring a lot lower, about 10 to 20 watts lower than my uh, pedal based power meter. And towards the end with a little push around 500 watts, the Peloton was about 80 to 100 watts lower than my uh, Osioma power meter. Uh, now let's take a look at another ride. This is a good ride with four minute efforts. Again, big separation in power measurement and that separation increased in the second half of the ride. When I looked at different rides, almost every one of them had the same issue. The separation increased in every single ride during the second half of the ride. That tells me there is a subtle end period with the bike numbers looked always better in the first half of the ride than the second half. This ride here, uh, during the first half, the bike plus measured about 8% lower. On the second half, the Peloton measured about 10.5% lower. On this ride, the separation went up as high as 16.4% during the second half of the ride. That is just a lot. I also started noticing another issue. This seems to usually happen around the 20-30 minute mark into the ride. So here in this ride, 34 minutes into it, 
the Peloton output started to drop. Even though my efforts did not drop, my cadence and bike resistance did not change. So here, my power meter is telling me uh, I was doing 200 to 215 watts, but the bike plus measurement started to go down as low as 137, 140 watts, and it stayed there for a period of time. And you can see that power separation really increased. This behavior happened on a number of rides. Uh, here's another one, for example, where you can see these little drops in power, again, started to happen around that 30 minute mark. Another ride on the 29th of October, I'm going to zoom in here around the 39 minute uh, of the ride. Uh, the Peloton power suddenly went from 290, 300 watts down to 220 and kept coming down to about 211 before it started to go back up again. Where in reality, I was pushing 330 to 340 uh, or 350 watts. And if I look at my heart rate here, it was quickly trending upwards uh, with, along with my power meter in this uh, little section. So I spoke with the Peloton about this issue and after they had me do a number of tests, a uh, static reset, calibration, and a complete bike reset and send them the logs, uh, they've determined this is a software issue with the Bike Plus and they think they can fix it with a firmware update. Yes, a firmware update. And according to the Peloton, and they received one other report of this and they don't think this is a hardware issue, which is good if it's true, and uh, they think they can resolve this uh, with a software update once they actually pin down the cause of this issue and figure out a solution. So if you happen to have a Peloton Bike Plus, let me know if you've noticed something like this where your effort is the same, uh, your cadence and resistance still the same, but that power output was dropping for you. Let me know down in the comment section. So to recap, there are three issues here. Peloton power measurement is off by quite a lot when comparing to a third party power meter. Uh, the second issue is power measurement is not precise or consistent, which is the bigger problem here. Uh, sometimes it's off by 2% and sometimes it's off by 16%. This inconsistency in measurement makes training with power or all their power zone classes not very useful and can be f even frustrating. Uh, one day you might find yourself holding zone 3 okay, and the next ride or even on the same ride you feel like you are doing the same type of effort but stuck in zone Two, it's hard to measure progress from one ride to the next with random numbers. And uh, finally, these random drops in power output. Now, the Peloton admitted to the last one and think they can fix it with a software update, but I'm not sure at this point if they are all related and what they will do with the inconsistency in power measurement. Uh, lack of precision in power measurement plagued the original bike and it does not seem like they did anything to fix it with the new bike plus. Uh, the inconsistency in power measurement and power drops are my biggest concern here. And whether Peloton can fix this with a firmware update is remain to be seen. Uh, some companies are good with releasing fixes with a software update and uh, sometimes just does not happen. Uh, if Peloton does address this, I'll definitely let you know here on this channel or website. So make sure to subscribe and uh, follow me on social media for updates. Uh, you can find all the links in the description of this video. Now, if you only like to do resistance-based Peloton classes, which tend to be the majority of their classes, nothing I said in this video will affect you. So just keep on riding. I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but hey, thanks for spending part of your day with me. Actually, it will affect you if you care about that leaderboard because that leaderboard is determined by the power output that you are generating. So yes, it will affect you. All right, I think I covered it all here. Uh, there you have it. Hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys in the next video.